Hi friends and students and all those who are interested in physics. This is uh, one of a long series of videos that I have decided to make uh, which will have either one problem or a couple of problems that I am trying to explain in detail so you understand the concepts better. I'm going to start with a problem dealing with equilibrium of objects and to illustrate the concepts we consider a meter stick and what you see right now is the the weight of the meter stick acting vertically down through its center of gravity which is assumed to be at 50 centimeters and as you know weight is the product of mass and acceleration due to gravity we can assume that the mass of this meter stick is 80 grams and it's acting down vertically down through its center of gravity which is at 50 centimeter and the meter stick is suspended by two strings one is at 20 centimeter the other is at 90 centimeters two strings attached to a rigid support on top maybe the ceiling or some very strong support that does not move and there are two objects suspended one at the 10 centimeter mark which is here that's a hundred gram mass and the other is at the 70 centimeter mark and that's a hundred and twenty gram mass so you have the two gram, two masses, 100 gram and 120 grams. So you have the tension in the strings acting up, as I have shown. We call them T1 and T2. Those are the forces, the tensions acting in the string. Now that's the meter stick, just a little bit more colorful now and we have to find the tension in the two strings the mass of the meter stick is 80 grams now 100 grams here is 0 0.1 kilogram multiplied by 9.8 will give the the weight of 100 grams which is 0 0.98 Newtons. Similarly, the mass of the meter stick was 80 grams, so it's 0 0.08 kilogram times 9.8, which gives 0.784 newtons. I will take that as 0 0.78 newtons in our calculation and 120 gram is 0 0.120 kilogram times 9.8 gives 1.176 newton which will take as 1.18 newton now there are two conditions for stable equilibrium first condition is that the total upward forces should be equal to the total downward forces or uh, so to say the net force along the y-axis is zero so you have two upward forces T1 and T2 acting up so T1 plus T2 should be equal to the sum of these three forces that are acting down so sum of the upward forces is equal to the sum of the downward forces that sets up one equation when you add all those three you get 2.94 newtons so we know we have one equation T1 plus T2 is 2.94 
Now the second condition for equilibrium is that when you take the torque about a certain point, any point, the net torque must be zero, which means the total counterclockwise torque should be equal to the total clockwise torque. I have decided to take the torque about the point 20 centimeters because then automatically the torque due to T1 would be zero because there's no distance between T1 and 20 because it's acting right at 20. Because remember that torque is the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the force to the point where you're taking the torque. So T1 does not produce any torque but if you look at it carefully you see there will be two clockwise and two counterclockwise torques. Okay, we're taking the moments about the 20 centimeter mark. And that is in order to cancel out the torque due to T1. Okay, that, those are the two counterclockwise torques. So with this point in perspective, if you look at it, you see that the 100 gram is trying to rotate it this way, that's counterclockwise. And so is T2. It's also trying to rotate it counterclockwise. So those are the two counterclockwise torques. The clockwise ones are the 80 gram, which is the mass of the meter stick, and the 120, because they are trying to rotate it in the other direction. Now that's, So we are using the two conditions. Net force is equal to zero, which gives us one equation. And now we're going to get the second one using net torque, which is tau is equal to zero. Okay, so the first one is 0.98 times 10, because the distance between them is 10. And when you take T2, it's going to be T2 times this distance, because remember we're taking the torque, about 20, and T2 is at 90. Therefore, the distance is 70. And I don't... Well, you need not change this into meters because as long as it's the same on both sides, it doesn't matter. So I'm keeping it in centimeters. So T2 times 70 must be equal to 0 0.78. All right, so what's the distance of that one? Isn't it 30? Yes, it is because it's acting at 50. We're taking the torque about 20, so it's 30. Plus... What's the distance of the 120? Isn't it going to be 50? Yes, 50 centimeters. So multiplying that, you get 9.8. This is 70 T2. And then when you multiply and add those two numbers on the right-hand side, you get 82.4. So take 9.8 to the other side, you get 70 T2 is 82.4 minus 9.8, which is 72.6. Therefore, if you divide 72.6 by 70, you're going to get T2 as 1.04 Newton. Now go back to equation 1, substitute into that, and you would get T1 plus 1.04 is 2.94, from which T1 is 1.9 Newtons. So this is a good example of how we use the two conditions for equilibrium, namely the net force is equal to zero and the net torque is equal to zero. Thank you. I hope you understood. Try to share this video and like it so that physics is made popular. Thank you. Hi, this is uh, question 2 in static equilibrium and uh, here we see that there is a, a beam supported by a cable so that's the cable there 
at one end and simply force a friction at this end. And you have uh, the weight of the beam acting right through its center. In addition to that, you have two times the weight of the beam at a distance x. And you also have the tension in the cable. So let's look at all the forces that act. Okay. The tension is T. The tension in the cable T can be resolved into T sine theta and T cos theta. And this T cos theta is exactly equal and opposite to the normal reaction. And this is the friction. W is the weight of the beam acting down through its center. And you have 2 times W acting at a distance X from the beam. Now those are the forces. So T can be resolved into T sine theta and T cos theta. Normal reaction is N, friction is F. You have the weight and twice the weight. Now we know that friction is mu s times n but n is equal to t cos theta because, because you see that n and t cos theta are equal and opposite so n is equal to t cos theta therefore when you multiply 0.5 with cos 30 uh, you get 0.433 t now there are two conditions in static equilibrium. The first one, the net force uh, along the y-axis in this case must be zero. So the total upward forces must be equal to the total downward forces. And uh, you have two upward forces. One is friction. The other is T sine theta. Two downward forces, W here and 2W. So, if the net force along the y-axis is zero, you're going to say 2W plus W is equal to F plus T sine 30, or T sine theta. But we already know that F is 0.433T plus T sine 30 degrees sine 30 degrees is 0.5 so on the right side when you add 0.433 t plus 0.5 t add these two we're going to get 0.933 t so that means the tension is 3.21 W. How? 3 divided by 0.933. So we got that equation from the first condition. Now, in the second case, we know that when you take the torque about any point, and we're going to get, take the torque, calculate the torque about this point, uh, there will be two clockwise, one of them would be this. And the second one is this, so there are two clockwise torques, and there is just one counterclockwise, which is this T sine theta. Remember that these two forces, F and N, will not create any torque at that point because there's no distance. Okay. So, taking the torques about the point, you get W times 2.25 plus 2W times X, which we're trying to find, should be equal to T sine 30, which is 0.5T 
times 4.50 okay w is right at the center that's why this distance is half of 4.5 which is 2.25 that's why we multiplied that with 2.25 and uh, 2 w is at a distance x so that's why we multiply 2 w with x and 0.5 t which is t sine 30 is at a distance of the length of the beam which is 4.50 so that's why we get the counterclockwise that way so on the right side you have 2.25 t but t can be substituted as 3.21 w and uh, multiply multiplying those two numbers gives you 7.23 on the left side now we can take this to the other side and subtract which gives 4.98 the w's can be cancelled from both sides and you get x is equal to 4.98 divided by 2 which is 2.49 meter well this again is a very important question and make sure you understand how this is done Hello there everybody who loves physics, my students and well-wishers. Here are 10 problems on static equilibrium. In this question, a bolt is to be tightened using a wrench and a perpendicular force of 165 newtons is applied at a distance of 0 0.140 meter from the center of the bolt. How much torque are you exerting in Newton meters? The force here is given and the distance is given. Torque is actually the product of the perpendicular force multiplied by the distance or the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. In this case, the distance is 0 0.140 and the force is 165. So that gives 23.1 Newton meter. This would be the kind of visual that would help you understand this. You have the wrench and the bolt and uh, do remember that the force is being applied here and that's why 0 0.140 is the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force which is this to the bolt head. In this question, two children of masses 20 kilogram and 30 kilogram sit balanced. Now, the word balanced there is important. That means it is in static equilibrium. Uh, balanced on a seesaw with the pivot point located at the center, which is usually the case. And if the children are separated by a distance of 3 meter, at what distance from the pivot point is the small child sitting? in order to maintain the balance. Notice here that it's the distance between the children that has been given as 3 meter. And of course they're not sitting at the same distance from the pivot. Uh, the heavier child should be sitting closer to the pivot. 
Now those are the forces that act. 3 meters the distance between them. 20 kilogram and 30 kilogram. And uh, the forces would be each one multiplied by 9.8. But uh, there is no need of multiplying with 9.8 here because you would do the same thing on both sides and it would get cancelled out. But to be perfect, you would have to do 20 times 9.8 times x. Because x is the distance of the, the, 20, the force by the 20 kilogram from the pivot. See, we always take force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the pivot. So 20 times x is going to be equal to 30 times 3 minus x because this distance is 3 minus x. The total is 3. This distance is x. Therefore, this is 3 minus x. So, in which case, the net torque would be 0. And so, distribute it. Collect the x's on one side. You get 50x. Because when this comes to the other side, it becomes positive. And so, divide to find x as 1.80 meter. So, the 20 kilogram child is seated 1.80 meter from that. That means the heavy child is only 1.20 meter from the pivot. The total comes out to be 3 meter. In this question, there is a 17 meter high and a 11 meter long wall under construction and its brazing is also shown. The wall is in stable equilibrium without the brazing but can pivot at its base. Calculate the force exerted by each of the 10 braces. If a strong wind exerts a horizontal force of 650 newtons on each square meter of the wall, assume that the net force from the wind acts at a height halfway up the wall, then all braces exert equal forces parallel to their lanes. Neglect the thickness of the wall. Now the diagram clearly shows the force due to the wind acting midway and uh, the two other forces are going to be the normal reaction acting upwards, normal reaction, and the weight of the wall acting downwards. But both of these forces do not create a torque at this point. Why? Because both of them are acting exactly at that point and there is no distance between the force and the point. Torque is the product of force and distance. And when the distance becomes zero, of course the torque becomes zero too. So there is no torque set up due to these two, but the torque due to this, the force of the wind, would be that force, the total force, multiplied by this distance, which is 8.5 meter. Okay, so that's one of the torques acting as the weight. And okay, so taking the torque about the pivot, the force of the wind multiplied by 8.5, that's actually the clockwise torque because it's trying to turn it towards the right side, should be equal to now the force applied by the braces now can be seen as F, FB and uh, so multiply FB with the distance, the perpendicular distance of that from the pivot. You see it's kind of diagram small but we're looking for this distance. Why? Because this is the force and we always need to multiply with the perpendicular distance. So we're looking for that for, uh, distance. And that distance from that diagram can be found out. There are 10 of them. That's why it's multiplied with 10. It is 8.5 sine 35. Because this angle is 35. 
and the distance r is what we're looking for clearly in this right angle triangle that you see here this is the opposite side therefore sine 35 is opposite side divided by 8.5 and that is why the side is 8.5 times a sine 35 okay times FB times 10 so rearrange and calculate FB the 8.5s get cancelled from both sides so you get it as the total force by the wind divided by 10 sine 35 now the force due to the wind has to be calculated because it's 650 newtons for one meter squared so find the total area of this which is 17 times 11 and they multiplied with 650 that gives this huge force acting and where is that acting at at the center okay so now when you substitute into this equation you get 10 times sine 35 which is 2.12 times 10 to the 4 newtons that is the force that uh, has to be acting on each brace so that it prevents the wall from toppling over okay so that is the third question now and we need that diagram to come up because it's about a drawbridge and supported entirely by its hinges so let's see the diagram come up and it's coming up in a strange way I think the diagram is going to come up at the end so I might as well show you the whole thing and then explain from there okay so as you see the diagram there look at the forces acting the weight of the bridge acting down that point W you have the force F acting you have the normal reaction and you have the tension in this string or this cable that is holding it but this problem says that the cables are flat so when you say the cables are flat that means there is no force acting on them that's what it means so actually in this case you only need to consider three forces normal reaction N upwards, F also upwards, and the weight downwards. There are two conditions for static equilibrium. The first condition is that some of the forces in the upward direction must be equal to the sum of forces in the downward direction. Now, F and N both acting up, so F plus N is that E, and then that's the first condition. And the second condition is that when you take this force, the total clockwise must be equal to the total counterclockwise. And you can take the calculate the torque about any point, it will be always correct. But here we're going to calculate the torque about this point. That's what the arrow shows about this point. So all distances are going to be measured from here. Now with this point as your perspective, you should notice that the weight is trying to turn it counterclockwise about this point, while force is trying to turn it clockwise. Do you see that? Force is trying to turn it clockwise, weight is trying to turn it counterclockwise about this point. And therefore, F times 9, because the total distance is 9, is this 7.5 is 1.5, so it's total 6, 9, is equal to weight of F multiplied by the distance, which is 7.9. So, we arrange, take 9 over to the other side, and we get the force at 1,000. And going back to the first condition, since we now know the force and uh, the weight is also given, we can find the normal reaction simply by taking over to the other side. Weight is 2500 times 9.8, which is 
questions and uh, takes a lot of effort to understand that. Okay, read the question. To get up on the roof, a person 70 kilograms places a 6 meter aluminum ladder. Mass of the ladder is 10 kilogram against the house. It's on a concrete pad with the base of the ladder 2 meter from the house. The ladder rests against a plastic rain gutter, and which we can assume to be frictionless. The center of mass of the ladder, uh, that is where uh, its uh, weight could be imagined to be acting, the center of mass, is 2 meter from the bottom, and the person is standing 3 meter from the bottom. And you got to find the magnitude of the forces on the ladder at the top and at the bottom. Right. So that is the ladder. Let me slow this down. And it's leaning against the rain gutter. The person is standing 3 meters from the bottom. That is his weight acting down, which should be 70 times 9.8 and then the mass of the the ladder creating its weight is this second green arrow acting down so the weight of the person and then the, the weight of the ladder and this here is the normal reaction at the floor and the fourth force which has just come up now is the normal reaction on the rain gutter inclined so we'll call it n prime and this has to be resolved into a vertical component and a horizontal component okay there are two other forces friction that ladder has a tendency to slip this way which means friction is in the opposite direction so that's friction there now that is, those are the two components. That is going to be n cos. Uh, that's n sine theta. Sorry, n sine theta, because that is theta. Prime sine theta, and the vertical component is n prime cos theta. And we can find theta from this triangle. Forces along the x axis. There are only two forces along the x axis, which you may notice. The one is friction along the x, and the other is n prime sine theta. So they must be equal to each other. Okay, so the net force along the x axis is zero. There are only two forces along the x axis. One is friction. So friction must be equal to the other one. The axis they must also add up to zero therefore we need to look at the take a look at the forces along the y Now I've just moved over to the other side so that I get two equations and my idea is to divide the second two equations. The two 
which enables us to find the friction. Now, the next condition for stable and static equilibrium is that when you take the torque, the clockwise torque should be equal to the total counterclockwise. So, here we're going to take the, calculate the torques about this point. And uh, when you do that, you automatically see that there is no torque due to N because there's no distance. And uh, the torque due to this weight of the ladder must be that times this distance, perpendicular distance, which is clockwise. The second, the, the, the weight of the person also creates a clockwise torque, which would be his weight multiplied by this distance, perpendicular distance. Remember that all distances are measured from the pivot, from the point where we want to calculate the torque. So there are two clockwise torques. One, two. There is one counterclockwise which is created. Uh, uh, actually, there is due to n prime sine theta and also due to n prime cos theta. So there are two counterclockwise. One due to this, the other due to this. When you find the torque due to this one, you're going to multiply n prime sine theta with the perpendicular distance, which is this. And when you find the torque due to n prime cos theta, okay, that's the line of action of the force, you're going to multiply with this total distance, which is given as 2 meter. So, the total clockwise, W times 2 cos theta, why? Because we know that this is 2 and this is theta, so this 2 cos theta. Plus W times 3 cos theta, because the hypotenuse in one case is 2, the other case is 3, that's why. Should be equal to n prime sine theta times 5.7. Now, let me tell you that this is 5.7. How do you get that? Because in this right angle triangle, this is uh, the length of the ladder which is given. I think it's 6 meters. And uh, this is 2. So 6 squared minus 2 squared. Take the square root of that, that gives you this. Okay, so n prime sine theta times 5.7 plus n prime cos theta times 2. Since you know this distance is 2. Now plugging in the numbers, 10 times 9.8 is the weight of the ladder. Times 2 cos theta plus 70 was the mass of the man. 70, okay, so 70 times 9.8 times 3 cos theta is n prime, we do not know n prime, 5.7 squared by 6 because sine theta, sine theta in this triangle is opposite side which is 5.7 divided by hypotenuse which is 6. So that's why we get 5.7 squared because there's already a 5.7 and sine theta is once again 5.7 by 6. You need to pay careful attention to get this problem. Plus n prime, now cos theta is 2 by 6 but there's already a 2 so it's going to be 2 squared by 6.
Do the math, you get 65.33 for the first term, second term is 686, you add them up, n prime times on the right hand side, get 6.08. Okay, so continuing to get n prime, that's going to be 124 when you calculate and then putting it back into the equation because now we have n prime you can find n because we know everything else now n prime is 124 we know cos theta is 2 by 6 so the first term gives 98, the second is 686. And on the right side you get 41.33. Finally, when you calculate, you're going to get N is 784 minus 41.33, which is 742 newtons. Now knowing that, we can find friction, because friction is, remember, from the first equation, and uh, plug in all this, that becomes 190 newtons. And uh, the force at the the force at the bottom because you have n and f at right angles, so it'll be square root f squared plus n squared. So now we get all the forces. Good luck on understanding this question, and it is. Uh, very important because it has everything that you need to know uh, from at least three chapters. And I wanted to draw the diagram again showing all the forces clearly. Here it is, friction, the two weights, the normal reaction, and uh, of course you have the reaction of the rain gutter resolved into two the distances are clearly shown here. Cos theta is 2 by 6. And I'm calculating these distances already 0 0.67. And uh, this is going to be 1 meter. So understand that when you take this as the pivot, there are two clockwise torques, and I uh, might as well draw it here. One is this, second is this, two clockwise, trying to turn this point in the clockwise direction. And uh, there are two counterclockwise, one is this, trying to turn it about this point. And the second is n prime cos theta 2. So that's how we do the problem applying the conditions of static equilibrium. Mm, here the man is fishing. The pole makes an angle of 25 degrees with the horizontal. The distance between the point where the line is attached to the pole and the angler's hand is 1.95 meter and the fish <laughs>
multiplied by the perpendicular distance. Okay, that's what I've tried to do here in the diagram already. This force is acting this way. You cannot multiply that with this distance unless you take the component of this force along the brown dotted arrows because then the force and the distance would be at right angles. Do you see that? Because to find the torque we always need to have them both the force and the distance to be at right angles. Because that is what I've done here. Because when you take T uh, along this side becomes T cos 30 and then all you got to do is T cos 30 times the distance which is given as 1.95 which gives 274 Newton meter this is also an assignment question remember that in this seventh question uh, two muscles in the back of the leg pull on the tendon as shown in the figure what total force do they exert once again you notice that the forces are 200 Newton but they head right because the head is tending to rotate because of the torque and that is why your head falls forward when you fall asleep in the class nobody does fall in the asleep in the physics class anyway calculate the force exerted by these muscles using the information in the figure so we need to get that figure up and once again, I put the figure at the end, so I might as well show you the whole thing here. And take a look at the diagram carefully. The weight of the head acting down is that 50 Newtons about the center of gravity. See, it's acting through the center of gravity. That's the pivot because that's where the neck muscles are when the neck you know is so there is a reaction force acting at that point and then this is the force applied by the muscles fm so when you calculate the torque about this point it's very clear that the 50 newton is trying to rotate it clockwise and uh, the force due to the muscles is trying to turn it counterclockwise let me draw that so this is trying to rotate it this way and this is trying to rotate it the other way and uh, if, to be in static or stable equilibrium you, need, you know that the two torques must be equal therefore fm times the distance fm times the distance is 5 centimeter that's why it's in meters now is equal to 50 times the distance which is 2.5 centimeter rearrange that and uh, you get the force due to the muscles because you've given this and it's directly in newtons so you get the force as 25 newtons down neck muscles must be pulling down to keep the head from going forward and the B part says what is the force exerted by the pivot on the head in the diagram that is shown as FJ to show the force at the joint and clearly the total upward force should be equal to the total downward force. There are two forces acting down, FM and W, and there's only one force acting up. So just FJ is the sum of the other two forces acting down. So that's 75 Newton, but remember that FJ is acting up. So 75 Newton up. And that brings us to the ninth question here. And here father is playing with this child as shown in the figure. And what force should the upper leg muscle exert to lift the child up? Alright, so here is the problem. And uh, I hope it's clear enough. Uh, the weight of the child is the weight of the child is acting down through the center of gravity and uh, that's 10 kilograms isn't it and uh, the weight of the leg itself is acting down 
through its center of gravity and the muscles are applying a force in along this direction and we're trying to find the the torque about the knee so that is our pivot here of course that's the pivot because the dad is playing with the child moving his leg you know his feet up and down uh, you know and so this is the pivot we're going to calculate all perpendicular distances from that point and you can already see that the distance of the weight of the leg is going to be this the distance of the child is this distance there is that clear enough and when you look at this point this force you see that the distance is this tiny small part okay now which are the clockwise torques definitely the weight of the leg and the weight of the child are both trying to rotate it this way clockwise both clockwise and which one is the counterclockwise surely this is the counterclockwise that's why you have uh, FQ times 0 0.2 0 0.02 I mean because that's 2 centimeter and uh, that is the counterclockwise force you see that the counterclockwise force and the distance is just 2 centimeter and in meters it's 0 0.02 is equal to the two other torques weight of the leg times 0 0.20 because the weight of the leg is here and the distance is 0 0.20 plus weight of the child times this distance okay I hope it's getting clear so you have the counterclockwise torque is equal to the sum of the two clockwise and the weight of the leg is uh, 39.2 newtons because it's 4 kilograms the weight of the child is 98 newtons because it's 10 kilograms now put back all that into this now we know everything except Q FQ rather so substitute and calculate so that is 39.2 times 0.2 plus 98 times 0 0.38 divided by 0 0.02 which gives 2254 newtons well that is problem number 10 and I am as much relieved as you are to get to the 10th question here the lady, what is she doing? She's taking push-ups. Hmm, taking push-ups is always difficult, but now you understand why, after you do this problem. Okay, assume that she moves up at a constant speed. The triceps muscle at the back of her upper arm has an effective lever arm of 1.75 centimeters. We'll see what that is. And she exerts a force on the floor at a horizontal distance of 20 centimeter from the elbow joint. Calculate the magnitude of the force in each triceps muscle and compare it to her weight. And then see how much work does she do to lift her center of mass uh, 0 0.240 meter. And D, what is her useful power if she does 25 push-ups in one minute? Okay, let's get this one down. Now, where's the pivot point going to be? Uh, we'll consider her feet to be the pivot here. So, all distances are going to be measured from there. And can you tell me which one is the clockwise torque? Yes, this is the clockwise torque. Her weight acting through her center gap. And which is... The counterclockwise torque, you're right, this is the counterclockwise torque, the force in the muscles. Can you see that they try, they tend to rotate the body in opposite directions? So what you got to do is 
her weight multiplied by 0 0.90 should be equal to force applied by the muscles times 1.50. All distances measured from the work. That is what I'm going to write just now. Okay, there it is. Okay, calculating the torque about the feet. Oh, so I drew it again. Now, so her weight times 0.9 should be equal to why 2F? Because she has two arms like anybody else. And so if the force in one arm is F, the total in both is 2F. So, so 2F times 1.5. And you can calculate F because her weight is 50 times 9.8 because the mass is 50 kilograms. Rearrange that and calculate that. You get 147 newtons for A. In the B part, uh, look at this diagram carefully. Okay. You can see the force in her triceps. The force in her triceps is FT and that is just 1.75 centimeters. That's very close to the elbow joint, you know. That's a tiny distance there from her elbow joint. Mm, so, right there. Okay. And the upward force on her hands, which we have already calculated, is F, 147 Newton, uh, which is acting... 20 centimeters from the elbow joint that's given in the problem. Now therefore when you take the elbow as the pivot FT times, so that is going to be the pivot now, that's the elbow joint. Uh, you can see that uh, the force in the triceps is creating the clockwise torque and the force in the hands down the floor is creating the counterclockwise. So FT times 1.75 is equal to F times 20. And uh, we know F, so we can find FT. So 147 times 20 by 1.75 gives 600, mm, sorry, 1680 newtons. Well, this video has taken about 45 minutes and I hope everybody will spend many minutes, if not hours, looking at this and try to understand this because this is really important. And thank you. Good luck. Keep with it. Struggle with it. Physics is a tough but interesting subject. And I'm with you to help you through. Thank you.